What's going on you guys and welcome back to the ARA show. So in today's video, I'm going to be revealing my growth portfolio for the first time ever. And this is a portfolio that I've been working on for the past few months and I just recently started investing to it in the recent month or so. And with that being said, if you guys remember in the video where I talked about why I decided to leave Acorns, this is basically what I left it for. I won't go too much into the specifics, but I'll leave a link in the description or on the top right over here if you guys want to check out why I decided to leave Acorns. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys my holdings what I've been doing for the past month or so. And also I wanted to talk about how to invest in the market correction. So if you guys want to see that, stay tuned and we're going to get right into the video. So first things first, I decided to create this account just because I noticed I didn't have any growth oriented stocks anywhere in any of my positions. And with Acorns, I wasn't able to do that either. I was just getting some indexes, which I mean, I can't complain about if you guys watch that video. And I, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description. But with this, I can actually hit on some of those growth oriented stocks that I wasn't getting before. And we'll kind of get into what those stocks are later on in the video. But for now, just know that I want to hit on some of my market appreciation goals. And that's why I decided to create this portfolio. So let's talk about the strategy of my portfolio. So I started with a lump sum of $2,000 and you can see on the first day I invested it was February 16th, which was actually right before the market correction, which kind of sucks. I mean, none of us can really time the market. So, I mean, here's just to show that I'm the worst market timer ever, but I mean, we're going to do what we're going to do. So we started off with $2,000 and went down to 1973. And from there, we started investing $25 every single week. And it's nothing too crazy. This is exactly what I was doing with my acorns. But now I'm just concentrating it into some of the holdings and stocks that I like a lot more than just a bunch of indexes. So that's the overall strategy of my portfolio. And we'll kind of get into what exactly I did when we do. And before we hop into the holdings that I have into this portfolio, this is kind of skewed. So it says I have a negative 52% return. It's because I actually invested into this, I guess you can see this account on M1 Finance quite some time before I decided to pull all that money out and shift it to public. And then I started using this account again. So I don't know why that's kind of weird and all messed up, but I am down about $218 and that's about 10%. So just want to leave that out there and I'm just going to keep on investing in dollar cost averaging in and we'll talk about that later on. But let's take a look at some of the holdings that I have into this account. All right, guys, so this is the ARA ETF, and I don't know why I came up with such a corny name. Let me know in the comments what I should name it. I thought it was pretty cool, so we're going to stick with it for now. And honestly, I can't even call it growth portfolio just because we're down so much. So we're just going to call the ARA ETF a decline portfolio. And if you guys want to lose money also with me, just invest into this ETF. Now I'm just playing, but I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. You guys can also invest into it if you guys like the holdings. I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. I'm just some bum on the YouTube. And to be honest, I'm not anyone special. So take all this information with a grain of salt. But I mean, if it does give you guys any value, then I'll be super, super happy if it does. But that being said, these are the holdings that I own in the ARA ETF. So we've got Enphase, Disney, Tesla, Etsy, Palantir, Amazon Square, Netflix, ArcW, Hero, which is just an ETF for the video game industry and esports, Salesforce, Neo, and EXPI. And these holdings are subject to change. I'll probably end up not selling any of these, but just kind of changing up the allocation, maybe adding a stock here and there. But like I said, this is in beta mode. So these are the stocks that I have and I'm hoping I get a lot of growth in the long term out of these stocks. And I won't go too much into the specifics why I own some of these companies, but I will do that in a future video. So if you guys want to see that, leave a like, comment, stay around, subscribe, stick around for the journey. And guys, let me know if you guys do. I'm super excited for this portfolio and hopefully it'll be able to pan out to something really cool. And who knows, maybe the ARA ETF will grow from a decline portfolio to a profitable one and a growth portfolio in the future so i'm going to be honest that wasn't really the greatest reveal ever but we're going to make a video where i talk about all these holdings later on in the future but i kind of want to talk about how to invest inside a market correction first so we're going to go to the buys that i had in this portfolio to kind of talk about how to invest inside this correction so with that being said let's hop right into that investing with a market correction happening is honestly one of the hardest things to do psychologically what a lot of people do is they end up panic selling so as soon as the market goes down they pull out all their investments and end up losing a lot of money and that's one of the last things that you want to do and honestly it's probably the worst thing that you could do in a market correction and it's kind of scary to think just because i mean the markets could technically go to zero and you could lose everything which is honestly a very scary thing but i mean the chances of that happening is very near impossible 
So what a lot of people do is once they pull out all their money, they don't end up investing again until the market's correct, which honestly could take years, months, weeks, who knows. With that being said, time in the market is always better than time in the market. And that's an old adage that Warren Buffett says. So it's not my quote, which it was, but it isn't. But in my opinion, I still think it's one of the most powerful quotes ever. So guys, what should you do in a market correction? So if it's not selling, what should you do, buy? Yup, that's exactly what I would advise. And like I said, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just some random dude on the internet. So take my advice with a grain of salt. So let's take a look at what I did. So I bought more and more. So like I said, I invest $25 every single week. You can see that's the first time I did it right over here. And then I did over here, over here, and over here. But I had some things in between. And on these days, the market dipped a lot more. So I decided to put more than just $25. I put in a lot more. And the way I like to see it and how a lot of other people see it is the market is on a sale. And I know it's corny, but it's technically true. So let's take a look at the first time that I bought Tesla. The first time I bought Tesla for $260 was at $813. And that's insane if you think about it. I mean, I literally bought it at the peak. But let's take a look at what I bought it for this morning almost a month later. I bought that same Tesla stock for $688. So it was on quite a sale, almost $150 cheaper. And I was able to lower my price average. So, I mean, if you keep buying on these dips, you're going to establish a better position. You're going to lower your average. And when the stock eventually booms, or if it does boom, you're going to be making a lot more than you would have if you had just sold out or if you had never invested again, or if you just didn't invest on these dips. Honestly, buying on these dips can be one of the hardest things to do psychologically. It feels as if you're burning all the money. And if hypothetically, if that stock ever went to zero, you'd lose all your money and that's honestly one of the scariest things about investing, especially buying on the dip. But in reality, buying on the dip can honestly be one of the best things that you can do for your portfolio and for your position. So let's take another look at what I did on February 23rd. So I put in $210 and with that, I was able to buy a lot more of Tesla, for example. And with that, I was able to put $75 and buy at $626. And this dramatically decreased my average again. So if you guys remember, I was at almost $813, was it, on my first initial buy on Tesla. But right now, I just took a look. I'm sitting at $725, which is still relatively high for Tesla, but it's so much lower than what it was at $813. So I'm making this giant leap, or I guess you can say this leap from $813 all the way down almost $100 in my portfolio and my position for Tesla, which is just amazing. So buying on these dips can be really beneficial to your positions in the long term. And these dips are almost like a blessing in disguise because I was able to average down in almost every single one of my stocks. But I'm not going to say that I'm perfect because I did make a few mistakes. I ran out of cash at some point extra cash that is on the sidelines. So I wasn't able to keep buying on these dips. And that's a mistake that I'm going to fix for the future. But what I had to do to kind of counter react that or to kind of make up for that mistake was to sell off some of my stocks that were less volatile. And this is a strategy that a lot of other investors do, especially financial institutions. They'll kind of bounce from one stock to another. It's called rotating. And we'll kind of get into that right now. So on this date over here, what I had to do was sell off some of my less volatile stocks. So Netflix, Disney, uh, this ETF right over here, and then Salesforce. So I sold off some of these investments in order to buy more on the dip for these investments. Because at the time, Tesla went even further down to 598. And, you know, I can resist that. So I had to invest and sell off some of these stocks into these more stocks that went down even more. And, I mean, this was a mistake because I wish I wouldn't have to sell anything. But at the end of the day, I was able to decrease my averages here while only taking minimal losses here. So that's another way that you guys can look at it if you don't have any cash on the side. All right, so let's take a look at it from a different angle. So this is the S&P 500, and if you had invested about a month ago, which is the same day that I decided to invest a month ago, so you would have basically broke even or been right around the same. But if you had panic sold, you probably would have sold here or maybe even here, to be honest, and you would have lost a lot of money. But if you had bought more on these dips, your average would have came from right around here to maybe around here or around here. But nonetheless, wherever it is along the scale, you would still be up money. And obviously, that's not the case for my portfolio, but that's for a different story, you feel me? But at the end of the day, you're still going to be at a better position than if you had not bought on these dips. 
So guys, I know that it can be very scary to buy on these dips, but at the end of the day, it's going to be very rewarding as well. As soon as you make out that hole, you're going to feel a lot better once you see your portfolio being broke even, and then it's going to be up more than if you had not invested at all. And I've been applying the same strategy to some of my other brokerages in Robinhood and as well as my dividend growth investing portfolio as well. And it's been panning off pretty well. I mean, we're not as bad as the Aerie ETF, but I mean, that's a topic for another time, you feel me? But like I said, at the end of the day, it could be very scary, but once you make it out, you're gonna feel great. Guys, with that being said, don't panic sell. Believe in your companies that you guys chose, you did your research on, your due diligence, and double down on the high conviction stocks that you have. Remember guys, it's not the valuation of the company that's getting worse. Your company is not going to do any worse that you chose. It's just the market overall that's doing worse. So believe in the higher conviction stocks that you have. Double down, average down, buy more to them on the dips, and believe in your research. So with that being said guys, if you found any value or you like my content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers soon and I'm almost there. So I appreciate all you guys that have already subscribed. It means a lot to me. And guys, remember, everybody eats.